I grew up learning that you shouldn't talk about religion or politics. I was told that they weren't polite things to discuss in public. I'm sure if you grew up in North America, you, you heard similar kinds of things. And, and there was a sense to not talk about religious, religion and politics. And that's probably true in other parts of the world. And, you know, really in some parts of the world, if you talked about religion and politics, you probably got in trouble with the government. So that was clearly something you didn't do. But with generations of people growing up with that sense that these were things not to talk about, we find ourselves today living in a world that's really characterized by divisions around religion and politics. And I think part of the reason we are so divided around religion and politics is because we never learned how to talk about them. We don't have the vocabulary for appropriate discourse. We don't know how to share our experience, and, and we're not quite sure how to listen when people's experience is different from our own. I can't really talk about the political end of that. That isn't my expertise. But I do want to talk about the divisions around religion, because they're very sharp, they're very marked, uh, and, and they're causing a great deal of strife in the world today. There's division between religions, there are divisions with people in, in the same religion, and there's a great chasm between people who describe themselves as religious and people who describe themselves as spiritual. In this latter case, people who describe themselves as religious often view people who say they are spiritual but not religious as people who are self-absorbed or selfish or too, too worried about their own fragility. Uh, and they need some sort of inner self-comfort. People who are spiritual but not religious look at people who are religious as being void of spirituality and believe that they're more concerned about institutional religion and as well as their dogma. And of course, it's interesting that both religious people and spiritual people have dogma. They all have things that they think you have to believe. I don't think that division does us any good. The reality is, is that all of our spiritual practices, whether you consider them religious practices or spiritual practices, all grew up within a context of religion. It may have not been your religion, but things like meditation and yoga and lighting candles and chanting, all of those things come from the history of religion. That's what people did to find an experience of the transcendent. And people use that, those things today, both within religious and spiritual contexts. So there's a great communality there. And, and I think we need to focus on that more than we do the divisions. But there's another communality that, that we share that I think is really important when it comes to thinking about religion and spirituality. Ever since Homo sapiens emerged on planet Earth, ever since our human ancestors were moving around, our race, our humanity, our human ones, developed rituals to mark life. Rituals for birth and death, for puberty and life transitions, for marriages and for so many other things in life, for the seasons and the time, and for many other aspects of day-to-day -day living. We continue to create rituals. Symbols are important for us. Those symbols are seen secularly today at football games and at soccer games. They're seen within our political arena. Uh, they're seen throughout our lives. Families have unique rituals. That's something we do. That's characteristic of, of what we find in religious and spiritual practice. So that symbolism and that metaphor that comes from symbol becomes very important for us and something that we all share in common. But even more essential is something that cuts across every religion and spiritual tradition. And that's a, an essential teaching that we often ignore. We get caught up in the differences and miss 
this fundamental truth that's found in all the world traditions. In the West, we know it as the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We hear that in the Judeo-Christian words, but words similar to that, conveying a very similar sensibility, have been found throughout human history in all the great traditions. I want to pause for a moment and read to you a few of the quotes from those traditions to help convey how universal this is. And I'm very purposely going to read these because I don't want to misword anything and I want to make sure that I, I show sufficient respect for each tradition. So I want to read these quotes. The first is from ancient Sanskrit. So we're going back quite far. One should never do something to others that one would regard as injury to oneself. In the ancient Tamil tradition, do not do to others what you know has hurt yourself. Ancient Greeks put it this way, what you do not want to have happen to you do not do to others. In Islam, the Hadith is a collection of sayings by the Prophet Muhammad. And in the Hadith it is written, that which you want for yourself, seek for humanity. And none of you truly believes until you wish for others what you wish for yourself. And perhaps my favorite comes from the West African Yoruba tradition. One who is going to take a pointed stick to pinch a baby bird should first try it out on himself to see how it feels. Or as we commonly say today, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. My friends, we get caught up in divisions and that doesn't help us. I think it's important to step back and realize that all of our religious and spiritual traditions call us, evoke us, challenge us to behave in ways that demonstrate care and compassion for others, to hold each other in high regard, to tangibly do things for people that better their life, just as we want people to do things to better our lives. The root of all religion, the root of all spiritual practice, draws us back to treating each other with respect, compassion, and concern. And I'm gonna be so bold as to say that if any religion or spiritual practice does anything to degrade another person, then there's something wrong with that religion or practice, because that's really not at the heart of all religion and religious practice. So today, I want to ask you to reflect on what it means to go back to the basics, the basics of religion and spirituality. Those basics draw us to look at our behavior and consider an ethical way of treating others and to treat others with the care and respect that we want to receive. And I believe that as we return to that basic message, we'll be able to bring greater wholeness and hope into the world. Thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Click the bell so that you're notified of future videos. Like this video, share it and leave me some comments around your thoughts about talking about religion and spirituality. Have a really great day.